Hello, viewers, and welcome back to Sahara TV. Speaking with me now is Senator Khalid Ahmed Zana, Senator of Borno State, and he's here to talk about um, the attacks over the past month um, in, Boko, uh, in Boko Haram, by Boko Haram, in Borno State, as well as other areas. And also, we spoke with him just under a year ago on um, what Boko Haram and their capabilities were back then and, and the problems that they were causing the people of Borno State. And um, we're going to check in with him now to see what the last 10 months or so of emergency rule has done for the state. Thank you, Senator Zana, for being with us here on Sahara TV. Yeah, thank you. Now, um, to start out, uh, last May we spoke with you and you mentioned uh, specifically that you believed uh, Boko Haram, you had evidence to show that Boko Haram was in control of 24 out of 27 Borno local government areas at that time. And now, recently, both we spoke with the Nigerian military spokesman Chris Olukulade, and this was somewhat reiterated during the presidential media chat in um, just I had on Monday. Oh, viewers, it looks like we have unfortunately lost the senator. The connection seems to have dropped. We will have him back on the line immediately uh, as soon as we can just clear up those issues. Um, so I understand. Oh, Senator Zana, I understand you're back with us. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, like I was saying, last May you pointed out that um, 24 of 27 Borno local government areas were in control of Boko Haram, and along with the military spokesperson and reiterated by President Jonathan in his recent presidential media chat, they paint a picture of winning the fight against Boko Haram, claiming that Boko Haram is only operating in the fringes, and Jonathan also said very specifically that we have kept them out of the major cities like Abuja. Now, yeah. is this... Now, this marks also 10 months of emergency rule. So what is your take? I mean, do you feel that Boko Haram is truly on the fringes or is the picture not being painted correctly? Yeah, they are now uh, walking uh, along the corridors of Yobe, Borno, and some parts of uh, Adamawa State. And uh, actually, they have been recording successes these days because of uh, the inability of the military to curb their activities. And I don't know for whatever reason, the um, military were very lackluster about uh, their, their uh, fight against the Boko Haram. And uh, it seems uh, sometimes they are afraid, uh, but according to my own investigations, um, it was found that at that time, the military were not equipped properly by the headquarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and so, the, according to the field commanders, they were saying they feel as if they are sending them to commit suicide whenever they want to. Hello, Senator. Go ahead. Senator Sun. Oh. It seems, uh, unfortunately, his connection has uh, dropped yet again. But as the senator was explaining, um, recently, uh, following some major Boko Haram attacks in uh, Yobe and Borno states, he made some statements to the press that he believed and had uh, stated that he had evidence to the fact that the military was not as motivated and could not keep up as far as in terms of equipment and firepower with Boko Haram insurgents that have been attacking numerous villages, like he mentioned, along the corridors of Yodwe, Borno, and Adamawa states. In fact, um, there have been record uh, numbers of attacks over the month of February uh, and, and, and even into this month of March as well. And he was making the statements that, um, you know, that he doesn't believe that the military is able. Uh, Senator, you're back on with us. Y yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sorry, the in incoming calls have been disturbing us. Ah, no problem, no problem. Please, go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, the military has been uh, very lenient on the, on, the, on the Boko Haram. I don't know for whatever reason they were not being armed by the army headquarters. Mm. So, so now uh, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, uh, in the recent comments we have been making and then the allegations made by the governor and with our own support so the military has now uh became very very serious 
Yes. Within and, the last four or five days. Yeah, I mean, I know you mentioned um, in a couple of press interviews, even as, as, as late as March 3rd, that you thought that Boko Haram was had just better firepower and, and equipment than, than the military that was sent against them. Now, okay, exactly. um, to that effect, I was wondering if you were, um, were looking into any other methods as far as methods to protect the people or to try to redirect the fight uh, or renew the fight against Boko Haram. Um, actually, we spoke with uh, General Buhari yesterday, and he mentioned one solution as to have a um, meeting, a security meeting with countries like Cameroon, Chad, and the Niger Republic on trying to work with these countries and their security forces to stop Boko Haram from fleeing across the border or perhaps from getting shipments of arms across the border using safe havens along those border lines where they seem to be operating at this time. Do you believe that's such a solution? And is there any effort to engage with those countries? Yes, it seems the president has started talking to the, uh, to the neighboring countries. Although I have been urging them to do that uh, for the past one year, just uh, after our interview, I was able to communicate with the security chiefs that uh, uh, there is a lot of cooperation with the, with the Boko Haram from our neighboring countries. And uh, therefore, I, uh, I asked them why is it that the government has never complained to the United Nations or have never uh, positively engaged the neighboring countries to discuss about this issue. In our closed-door meetings, I actually raised those issues. And uh, I was really surprised that it is only now the government has started taking action on that particular aspect of uh, contacting the, 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 the neighboring countries. Mm. And apart from that, um, the Boko Haram have been freely operating uh, just uh, near my degree. It is not quite 10 uh, kilometers away from my degree where their operation base has been. Mm -hmm. And they have been operating from that route, going to Bama, coming to Maiduguri, going to Yobe, going to the other parts of the state, and hindered by the military. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, if there is a serious uh, uh, approach by the government, these things couldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. And all those uh, local governments that have been attacked by the by the Boko Haram, uh, just uh, within the, 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 the corridors of uh, Sambisa, which I talked about. Right. Uh, now, you know, and, yeah. uh, and the, the, that is their operation base. Mm -hmm. They will go and attack and come back mm -hmm. and, 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 and perhaps by the presence of uh, the military or even the aircraft hovering over. Yeah. And uh, they were never being attacked by the, by, by the aircraft. Mm. So this has actually bothered all of us, all the citizens of Borno, that they will come and do an operation for four hours, five hours, and then uh, they will go back to their base without uh, any... Any hindrance, uh, like you mentioned. Now, Senator, I yeah. have a question, because you've mentioned the, the way that the military has been engaging them, perhaps, and even the Jonathan and administration and their strategy toward Boko Haram. But I have a question. Um, with General Gusau and now the, as well as the new Defense Secretary and uh, Colonel Dasuki as NSA, I was wondering, um, with all of the, the Northerners, these two positions especially, who care about Northern interests, why do you think then, um, do, do we keep having people in the North express this feeling? And, and as you're still expressing it now, that Jonathan doesn't care about the North when these major security players are northerners and, and, and would have northern interests at, at heart. What do, you, what do you think is going on there? Yeah, actually, even before the appointment of General Gusau, the change of button of the security chiefs, uh, 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 now the, the present crop of chiefs that have been appointed are very serious on the, on the, on, on, on the situation. Uh, actually, they didn't know that uh, uh, most of those who are in the field were being appointed by the previous uh, security chiefs. And uh, actually, there is a sort of connivance, I could say, uh, be because they deliberately refused to be, uh, to be armed. And, 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 and uh, this made them not to uh, act properly 
uh, and they feel, despite the several uh, positive actions being taken by the field commanders, mm -hmm. but they are handicapped. Mm -hmm. so, so you mean the, the, security, the new securities yes. and also let me tell you one one thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Actually, after the uh, imposition of this state of emergency, there were successes. You know, for mm -hmm. one reason or the other, when the successes were achieved, mm -hmm. uh, there was change of certain officers, which uh, which have even given uh, the credit of bringing peace to to, to the state. And I, we don't know for whatever reason those officers were being removed from the state. Right. And we also lodged a complaint uh, when our, our people contacted us. And these people were returned to, 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 to maintain peace. But unfortunately, within two, three weeks, they were being taken away. And uh, since those, uh, those officers were taken away, the security situation had been deteriorating by the day. Mm. And uh, when these new chiefs were being appointed uh, with, their, with our advisors and those who knew what was going on were able to convince the new chiefs to return those officers. And those officers are now back at the field. And uh, now, now uh, after the last attack and uh, after our cry to, to the world about the inaction of the military, now they have started operating very well and then new arms were given and then more men were being sent to Borno. Mm -hmm. and within the last uh, three, four days, I think there are a lot of successes being achieved by the military. So there seems to be in recent times, in your estimate, since this uh, new appointment of these security chiefs, there seems to be, at least for now, some improvement as far as the troops coming in and, and, and their preparedness. Yeah, they are, okay. there, there are improvements within the last four days. Okay. You know, last five days I even gave an uh, interview to BBC and mm -hmm. uh, other medias, mm -hmm. and I, I told them the precarious situation we are in. And then uh, at that time, I think I told them that when I was coming from my degree, I uh, saw a lot of uh, arms being moved to my degree. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they have now started taking action. Mm -hmm. And I hope uh, they will achieve something. And I learned from my people that there are achievements, and uh, some of them are even free to go into Sambisa and then uh, seeing dead bodies of Boko Haram members. Right. Okay. Uh, now, we're five years into the Boko Haram insurgency. Have you noticed any fundamental changes in the psyche of the people in northern Nigeria as a result? No, actually. Uh, uh, People are being bothered, you know. In Maiduguri alone, the Boko Haram were being chased out by the by by our youth, mm -hmm. you know. And to their dismay, uh, they were being allowed to operate freely in the bush. You, you know, in the pretext of, uh, of of the Boko Haram being in the midst of the people, uh, a lot of civilians were being killed, and even. 80% uh, more than the number of Boko Haram that were being killed within the city. And after they were being chased out uh, into the bush, unfortunately the military could not follow them uh, into the bush or they don't chase them at all. They will just come and do an attack, kill people and then go back. And nobody will make any effort to chase them. Mm. And this surprised the people. And uh, the, despite the cooperation from the society, uh, you know, the military became so reluctant to chase the, the Boko Haram into the bush. Mm -hmm. So they had a uh, very free, free hand to operate. Mm -hmm. Now, one final question here, Senator. Um, so it's been over 40 years since the Nigeria Biafran War, and the people of eastern Nigeria, uh, it can be said, are still suffering from the aftermath. As we hope now for yeah. an end to Boko Haram insurgency, you know, hopefully very soon, do you, what long-term consequences do you foresee in northern Nigeria as far as rebuilding, as far as the trust, as far in, in, in relation to what, you, what we've seen in eastern Nigeria even, you know, these 40 years since the war? The, the damage in, the, in northern Nigeria, particularly in Borno and Yobe, 
is uh, is really heartening. And uh, you know, if you look at Bama, the second largest city in 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 Borno, and it's almost the size of Yobe capital, uh, that is Damaturu, and uh, half of that city is being destroyed. And uh, in addition to that, uh, other two local government headquarters were being destroyed. And also, Baga is, is, is one of the largest cities in the northern part of Borno, and it's been completely destroyed, although that one was being destroyed by the army. But uh, uh, now it is very, very difficult for the people of, uh, of, of, of Borno because most of the markets that they used to go for their for their uh, marketing activities are now non-existent. And then for the past one year, uh, during the rainy season, nobody was allowed to farm. And also, even for the dry uh, season uh, farming, uh, nobody was able to go and farm because the Boko Haram people were in control. And if they see anybody from the major city, they will kill. They say, you, you, now, uh, you are now conniving with government mm. not to allow us to go and stay in the cities. So if they see anybody from Bama, from Maiduguri, from Kondoga, or any major city, they will just immediately kill or slaughter. Mm. So wow. therefore, it is very difficult for my people. And then most of the people, are, I think 60 to 70 percent, sleep uh, uh, maybe eat once a day. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is uh, how, how precarious the situation is. And uh, there is no any international donor agency that is coming to give aid to the people because they don't even trust the Nigerian security in protecting them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then the Nigerian government also giving a piecemeal to any place where there is a, uh, there is a crisis, like, say, the burning of Bama, the death, burning of Kondoga, the burning of uh, Mafa. Yeah, I think the uh, Nigerian Emergency Management Agency gives uh, uh, some food items and some clothing, and mm -hmm. that is once in a while. M maybe if they did it once now, maybe that will be over. Mm -hmm. And I, I am urging the government to be given these type, type of aid continuously uh, be, until the situation improves. Mm -hmm. Because as of now, there is no any market activity other than the state capital. So which means everything is completely down, mm -hmm. is being grounded. Okay, Senator, so thank I, you. I hope the international community will now rise up to do something about it. Okay, because thank you. We are oh, more, because at least a million, we, we have at least 500,000 uh, open, mm -hmm. and then widows are up to 100,000. Wow. And that is not known to the international community. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 we are in a very precarious situation. Well, thank you, Senator Zana. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave the discussion there at this point. But thank you for speaking with us here on Sahara TV. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, at any time, I'm ready to give you more information whenever is being required. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Viewers, that has been Senator Khalid Zana of Borno State. He was here speaking with us on uh, Boko Haram and the ongoing insurgency and also his thoughts on as we approach 10 months of emergency rule within Borno, Yobe and Adamawa State. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up as well as later in the day. We will have our Sahara TV sports show with a break with Tracy as well as our regulars Keeping It Real and Dr. Damages. Stay tuned and follow us on live stream as well as on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.